Hi everyone, I'm Chad Mullen with Vacuum Interrupters. I want to thank all of you for attending our webinar today over timing and MAC testing medium voltage vacuum circuit breakers. We're going to go into a short video uh, that we've put together. Um, hopefully you enjoy. everybody, I'm Chad Mullen with Vacuum Interrupters. Today I'm going to take a few minutes to talk to you about timing medium voltage breakers and also atmospheric condition testing as well. So today we're going to be using Vacuum Interrupters breaker timer, the CBT1203, to time our breaker. And first I'm going to hook up our control power plug. So next, we're going to be hooking up our clamps for our main contacts. The bottom clamps are our commons. They will have no polarity. Doesn't matter how you hook those up. The top, you want to go in order from your A, B, and C phase. That's our hookup. Ready to turn our test set on and start testing. All right, so we're going to turn on our timer. We're going to set our variac according to our voltage on the nameplate for the control voltage, which is 125 DC, close to. So right now our test set's telling us that our breaker is closed. Our voltage is DC for our secondary. So now all we got to do is send our open command. So we're gonna, our breaker is discharged. We're gonna turn our um, charging motor on. Now we're gonna reset it. Our breaker is in the open position. We'll send a close command. So after running the test, your test set will give you your time in millisecond results to the manufacturer specs. So some of the things you can find by simply timing the contacts on your breaker is you're going to be looking at the open and closing speeds of your breaker. So with that information, if it's opening too slow, it could be drawing the arc too much and therefore damaging the contacts. You also want it to close within the uh, manufacturer spec time as well. So um, another thing that it could possibly give you is to indicate whether the mechanism is getting slow, uh, whether it's just old and worn out or the lubrications are um, just getting gummed up on you. Um, uh, the last thing would be uh, it, it will make sure all your phases are closing in at the same time. If you get your phases closing in at different times, what that can do is downstream from your breaker it will start to, if you have a transformer or a motor, it'll try to twist those windings as if they're not simultaneously closing together. So we're back to the breaker that we're doing our time test on. So if you're using our CBT1203, we make custom OEM plugs that are compatible with the control voltage cable. So therefore, all you have to do is plug this in simply to the contact block on the breaker itself. Along with the VCPW plug, we also have a variety of different plugs compatible with other breakers as well. So now we're going to talk about another test set from Vacuum Interrupters. The MAC-TS4 stands for Magnetron Atmospheric Condition Test Set. So what that does is test the vacuum bottle for the amount of pressure buildup inside of it. Therefore, you can use that data to trend and predict failure in the vacuum bottle. Unlike the AC high pot, which only gives you a pass or fail result, and that's all the information you have from that. So the first method of testing with our MAC TS4 is going to be our flex coil, which is wrapped directly around the vacuum bottle. First, you're going to have to insulate the bottle from the coil with our Nomex paper. I'll explain further on that in just a little bit. So when we're wrapping our coil, what you'll want to do is take the small clamp through first. And you want to go to pull out all your slack. 
to where the bigger clamp hangs right there. Then after that, you want five laps around, nice and tight. Okay, so after we have our five wraps around the bottle, we're going to use a ratchet clamp. We'll tighten it up a little bit more. So we have one, two, three, four, five wraps. And we're going to connect our coil. And also make sure your five wraps are also centered where your contacts are inside of your vacuum bottle. Now that our leads are hooked up, we're going to power on our test set. So this is our scroll wheel that we'll do all our selecting and navigating through the test set. We have save data, time settings, and a PC connection if you want to use the interface with your computer. So we'll go into our VI test. So as you can see, we have different curve selections and all these curves are based on the diameter of the bottle around the contacts. So we will pick our curve according to our breaker we're running the test on, which will be a curve two, four to five inches. Now all we're gonna do is run and make sure everything is connected correctly and hit OK. Now we're running a test. So the first test you see right here, it's checking your overall leakage current with the initial high pot test, which is 0.2 microamps. And what we're gonna do is subtract that from our final results when we add our magnetic field to the bottle. So our numbers that we got here are very good readings, negative seven amps. So this is our ion current. This is the number that we're actually measuring. Down here is our negative five PA. That is a calculated reading with our measurement for our ion current, our known, known high voltage, and then our known magnetic field strength. So now that we have our results, we can use those results uh, that we've received from the test set in the form of pressure. We can reference that to our pressure chart to see where your vacuum bottle is in its lifetime. So now that we talked about one method of testing with our Mac TS4, we're gonna talk about another way to test with it. This is our rigid coil test method. This is a power vac breaker. This coil is power vac specific, but we also have rigid coils that are compatible with breakers that have a clearance all the way around the pole assembly. So with this larger coil, and a, a larger amount of airspace between the vacuum bottle and the coil, you have to add more of a charge. So what we're doing is adding this capacitor box that piggybacks onto our main test set to give you more of a charge during your test. So the great thing about the rigid coil is it makes it considerably easier to set up for testing. All you have to do is simply place the rigid coil over the pole assembly and it falls directly where you need it to for the vacuum bottle. I'm gonna talk about a couple more things in reference to our Mac TS4 testing. So what we have here is our final method of testing. This is called our fixed coil. Most of the time this is used with breaker shops that have to take out small bottles and contactors and or things along that sort. Uh, along this size, <coughs> when it's no longer efficient to test it in the field, what, how this works is you drop the bottle inside that coil and then the natural resting position of a vacuum bottle is closed. So what you'll need to do is open it during test. So we have jigs available to open the bottle while you apply your magnetic field and high voltage to that. The second thing would be going back to insulating the vacuum bottle while you're using the flex coil. So the reason we use this Nomex paper is because inside every vacuum bottle, you have a series of metal shields that go down the bottle. If you'll notice this gap right here, it's very small. 
if you have bad insulation inside of your vacuum bottle and apply our 25 kV DC to the bottle, it can jump this gap, energize the ring around the bottle, and damage your test set through the low voltage coil. Again, I'm Chad Mullen with Vacuum Interrupters. If you'd like more scientific information uh, concerning our Mac TS4, you can find that on our website, vacuuminterrupters.com, or even more information on our timer as well. Thank you for watching. All right, everybody, that concludes the video portion of our webinar. Uh, just to remind you, if you do have any questions that you want to ask, you need to be signed into your YouTube or Google account. So right now what we're going to do is leave the floor open for some questions you may have, and uh, I can answer them. Uh, if there's a question that you, don't, that you do ask and I can't answer, leave your information with us, um, and I'll be able to get the answer to you. Uh, if you don't have a YouTube or Google account, you can log into our website at vacuuminterrupters.com and ask us questions there as well. <clears throat> so we do have a, t a couple of questions. Uh, question one, uh, what, how, what is the time frame that it takes to test a breaker with the flex coil? So that is going to uh, be determined basically on what breaker you have. All breakers kind of have their own time frame. A GE power vac that you'd use a rigid coil for would take maybe a matter of five minutes to test a breaker. Um, if you get into where you have to wrap with the flex coil, that is if you have a, uh, a VCPW breaker that can take maybe up to 30 minutes a breaker. Some breakers involve a little disassembly on the phase barriers to be able to fit your, fit your coil around. Uh, so those could take a little more, more time, but uh, you really need to know what breaker you're getting into first before you MAC test. So one question is, how do we check leakage or loss of vacuum? Um, so the, the point of the MAC test set is to give you your pressure buildup inside of your bottle. So the, it, does, it does test for the leakage current uh, overall on the initial test with this, but once you get into the final test with the MAC test set, that's going to produce a pressure result for you and uh, you'll basically refer to our, time, or our chart with uh, according to Pastion's curve and we'll be able to place your bottle in that chart and kind of give you a time frame in your bottles. Yes, but um, also just if you want to get a simple um, leakage current result from your breakers, you can just run the AC high pot test. Uh, another question, what is the maximum tolerance between phases when you're timing? Um, typically, we would want you to refer back to the manufacturer spec, but if you don't have manufacturer spec, um, you usually don't want them any further than two milliseconds apart on the trips and on the close, they can be around four milliseconds. That's also referring back to the previous test, as, re, test results on that certain breaker as well from the last outage. So one of the questions were, what happens in the side of a bottle whenever a typical arc happens? Um, so the vacuum is there to basically extinguish the arc. So whenever this happens, the contacts pull apart. And on the inside of the bottle, it has shields. So whenever it does open during energized state, it'll collect metal vapors from the shields whenever it operates. Um, but as far as the arc, if you have a properly operating vacuum bottle, it's a very small arc uh, and clears very fast. Okay, give it a minute for a few more questions.
So we had a question uh, asking about the working principles of a vacuum interrupter. Um, we do, that'll be, a, um, if you get into our website we, or contact us in any way after this, we can send you a lot of uh, white sheet information on our vacuum interrupters and our test equipment as well. All right, guys, again, my name is Chad Mullen. I'm with Vacuum Interrupters. I want to thank you all again for attending today. Uh, if you have any further questions or if you didn't think of a question now, you come up with one later. Oh, we got one more question. Uh, what, so the question is, what are some reasons a vacuum bottle may fail immaturely? Um, so some can, <clears throat> some can make it out of the manufacturer somewhat defective. It might not have been caught before the bottle was released, um, or uh, depending, a lot of uh, environmental issues could go into effect. If it's a very corrosive environment, if you have space heaters, if it's keeping the humidity out, um, pretty much uh, all the environmental concerns on any other apparatus you may have what can play an effect on uh, premature failure. So. Uh, that's pretty much it for uh, premature failure in a vacuum bottle. Other than that, it would be time and loss of vacuum. Okay, so one of the questions is what percentage of bottles fail the MAC test set versus the AC high pot test set? So the thing with the MAC is you, you can catch these bottles at an earlier state with the high pot. So um, typically it'd be a good mixture of uh, one failing. So you're gonna fail at a different stage with the bottles with the MAC test set versus the AC high pot. The AC high pot, when you fail with th that test set, those bottles have already failed. It was already in service with a bad bottle. You just pulled it out and confirmed it. But with the Mac, it's kind of a different realm. You want to catch them at a, the, a certain stage in the bottle's life. So it's, it's kind of a hard comparison between the two and which one you see failures more. So another question was, do you still need to perform an AC high pot test? And the answer to that is yes. Um, the MAC test set could take the place of the actual bottle integrity test, but as far as the over potential test that you want to with a ground reference and everything, uh, that's still highly recommended because the MAC test set is not testing any other insulating values on your breaker. It's only testing what's happening inside of your bottle. So with AC high pot, you're still performing a withstand test on every component in the pole assembly. So yes, we still want you to do the AC high pot and the MAC test set. Preferably, we would want you to do the MAC test set first so there's, an, any, so there's no disturbance in the bottle before you run that test. All right, guys, uh, so again, Chad Mullen, I'm with Vacuum Interrupters. This is our topic over timing and MAC testing. Um, thank you all for attending. If you have any further questions, you can contact us through our website, vacuuminterrupters.com. Thank you.